through the codes and metaphors we are given today and discover for yourself how personal, how universal, how powerful this teaching is. What this is not is one religion over another. In fact, that is the great revelation and legacy of the Holy One from Nazareth to reveal authentic truth, cosmic truth to the world. And of course, what do we do? Put it in a box, use it against others, burn the heretics, etc. Et Today, let's find that kernel of reality that hits you where you live all the days of your life. Wouldn't that be a wonderful thing? We can use all the help we can get for this, can't we? In fact, that's why we join together on Sundays to be reminded, to be enlightened. You know, to be disciples is to be a learner, a student. So let's learn some things today. The teaching begins right off the bat with two words, I am. Ego e me in Greek, we hear the Christ, the anointed one, say those words 43 times in the Gospel of John. I am the bread of life. I am the good shepherd. I am the light of the world. But I want to remind you where it was first stated in Holy Scripture. That is in the very beginning of this journey for humanity on Mount Sinai. When Moses says, who shall I say send me? And the answer from the uncreated one, from the mystery of life, the source of being is ego e me. I am the one who is, or I of timeless be. Right away, we are at the center of truth, not of a creed, not of a belief system, but reality for you, for me, for all of us. Whether we call ourselves Christian or not, I want to remind you that it was the enemies of this teaching who called the followers Christian. They called themselves people of the way, people of the way, a way of being, a new way of seeing life, living life, understanding. And so this is about liberation in the deepest way. It's about your I am being dug out from underneath all the rubble, all the scars and the wounds of life, nothing left. I am the vine, you are the branches. Seemingly simple agricultural teaching. As I told the children, as you know so well, that branch is not connected to the source of its life. It comes to nothing. So, my hope for you today is that what you hear is something very personal. Something that can make an axis shift in your understanding. This goes beyond religion into truth. So let's walk through these metaphors so often misunderstood. Let's understand what is hidden. The message in the bottle for every human being. We begin with, he removes every branch in me that bears no fruit that could so easily be understood as condemnation and wrath. Let's do away with that, shall we? You know that vine, that true vine, is opposed to the false vine. And it just so happens that the symbol of Israel, not a nation, not an ethnic group, but the chosen ones meant to live out these truths, was in fact a vine. Founded on their ancient coins. In the days of Jesus, it was a great immense a vine on the temple. And it's not that Jesus condemns these teachings, these original primitive insights on the mystery of life. He just takes us through a quantum leap beyond what religion so easily turns into. And don't you know what it turns into? Rules and regulations, requirements, limited thinking, crystallization, of that which cannot be contained. Jesus is opposed to all that is reduced to what we call religion, which turn into the opposite of the teaching. Instead of unconditional love, it becomes judgment and hate and separation. So the Holy One is speaking beyond one set of teachings into something that everybody, Buddhists, Hindu otherwise can relate to. It is for every human being, even the atheist who believes in something or nothing. Because of the alienation of these teachings, let's try to find the living truth, transcends it all. 
He removes every branch that bears no fruit. Why? Because the branch of that grows without completing its purpose. As you with green thumbs know, steals the energy in the vine from the other fruit. So let me make it personal. Let me show you how close up this is. What is it in your life that you put your energy into and that comes to nothing? That wastes your life away? That wears you out? That leads you nowhere? Haven't we all stolen that precious psychic gold of life and used it for empty purposes? Come up with something in your mind, in a relationship, in a project that you had to do at all costs and that did not lead through fruition. We'll have to define here as well. Every branch that bears fruit, he prunes to make it bear more fruit. There is nothing more profound than metaphors, the parables of Yeshua. So you need to go beyond the surface and make it perfect. We are each and every one of us true by life. We learn as we grow, hopefully, through our mistakes, through the circumstances of life, we discover, okay, that is the wrong direction. That kind of behavior leads nowhere. I must go back to this. I must center myself and find peace and out of that be my true self. And we're told that this pruning is in order to create better fruit. Interestingly enough, in the Greek, that word katharoi pruning also means cleansing. And so we are cleansed by that which prunes us. And I suggest to you that pain of life, which we all know each individually, is not just tragic happenstances that we are stuck with in this momentary passage through existence, but opportunities to turn to that which can really give us meaning and purpose. Now hear me well, it's not that God gives us the suffering, it's that through this cosmic view of things we redirect the suffering from empty, tragic bitterness to fruitful understanding to sensitivity towards others, to remolding our behavior and our mindset so that we can live rooted in that which we truly are, children of the uncreated, meant to enjoy the beauty and to be the beauty and to do the beauty in this world. Find our true purpose. Don't you see how that transcends all that human beings have made of religion? That's why Jesus says, I am the true vine. Not because the creed is the right one over against somebody else's, but because the reality of our existence is to be connected to something greater than ourselves. And to find ourselves in that greater reality. We are so busy with being a disconnected branch, separated from it. That's another definition of the ego, the imaginary self, the infantile self that just lives for itself. There is no such thing, it is nothingness. We are hardwired and designed to find ourselves through our connection, something infinitely vaster than we are. Don't you see how much that explains about human life, human history, why it is that so many end up in bitterness and despair? Because they have become separated, not from a belief system that is confusing, that has multiple theologies, but from the vibrant reality of being rooted in the spirit. In that rootedness, we discover why we are here. We discover our fulfillment and our joy, even in the hospital, even in the face of unemployment, in the face of our mortality. That is powerful. We are empowered by spirit, if we remember. Therefore, he says, abide in me as I abide in you. An old English word has to do with well, remember, be conscious of. Don't you see that when we click into that alignment with the reality of the Holy. Whatever that means, that we can't understand anyway, that unknowing of the Holy, opening ourselves to it, knowing we are not alone on our own, then everything is different, then we have new strength. Have you not, some of you, known that moment in life when you were connected to a source of empowerment that allowed you to forgive, that allowed you to start again that allowed you to say, I'm sorry, that helped you mature into the fullness, the wholeness of being a child of the universe, 
meant to live in consciousness of that which is beautiful and holy and good so that all that is its opposite which is everything we see almost can be reduced to dead branches that lost their way that can bear no fruit he says if you abide in me you're conscious of me what is me not the man with the beard and the sandals but the remembrance of the holy the direct access to spirit then you can bear fruit because apart from me you can do nothing you know we look at that line don't know what to make of it most of us are hyper busy these days aren't we whether it's with your computer or job or friend or social life we're very busy people so busy that we block out this reality it's a distraction because when you come into silence then you realize that all of our emotions and thoughts are passing through are transient are momentary and are not real think of how often you've been angry and outraged and then found out there was no reason for it and you wasted all that time and energy we call him savior because he brings us into alignment with that deeper place within out of which we don't have to live like that we can be at peace we can keep others from stealing our peace that's advanced spiritual work it says whoever does not abide in me is thrown away like a branch and withers don't you know people who wither are withering growing more and more bitter more and more enraged more and more hopeless we all know people like that be sure that you're not one of them and if you are remember the secret of this holy teaching this revelation plug back in it's never too late remember that you're not an isolated branch you're part of something greater and that greater vine wants to shoot its life through you so that you can be a beautiful human being as long as we exist we have a chance to find our real potential and purpose and to break out of the wrong direction which leads to withering more than that he gives us this metaphor such branches are thrown into the fire and burn i don't take that as fire and brimstone let's keep it simple what do you do with a piece of wood that's not going to have foliage or fruit in the old days before Thomas Edison helped us out you put it in the fire go up and smoke look at the poetry of this metaphor end up as nothing the ancient teachers said that hell was non being nothingness total separation from the essence of life or illusory ego which is the cut off branch come to nothing but our deeper self connected to the infinite source of existence to eternity itself to spirit leaves behind a legacy for generations of how to be a beautiful human being how to incarnate unconditional goodness and love in a world that has lost its way you see how these metaphors can be so misused trying to turn us into a rigid religion when it's that liberation of universal truth that way for every human being no matter who they are made possible by these teachings he says my father is glorified by this that you bear much that is to say the universe is made better the holy one the uncreated one is made happy by little old you when you bear fruit by remembering your inheritance as a spiritual being and what is this fruit it's not cash it's not works it's not things we leave behind rather all this them for us as an example little things like love the joy peace patience there's some hard fruit to grow on to generosity kindness faithfulness to that which is greater than we are self control critical because we so easily break off when we have no self control lord give us that understanding for each and every one here that to be bearing fruit means often to endure this life to suffer through to grow and mature and learn instead of being victimized by the pain of life and to become one who can share with others something that changes the world and makes it in your little corner even for one other person a better place the secret of life the way of awakening the presence of the holy to our true self 